I'm Teresa. I've been in the UK for 50 years. Came when I was 11. My father uh, was a chef and he saved enough money in two years to apply for the whole family to join. So I studied nursing and then when I was 42 decided to join the Army Reserves and I stayed for 17 years. It toughens you up. And you do things that you don't realise you're capable of. You find a, a certain strength in you, I think, when you're put under pressure. It makes you humble, makes you realise we have a lot compared to, to a lot of people. And I just wanted to give something back. I have a little um, object that's... Um, I like it because it shows a little boy catching fish and he's, he's dressed in like a Chinese jacket. And also, um, I like the, the fact that, you know, you need to persevere. Yeah, that reminds me of how I like to be. I'm 31 years old and I work as a solicitor and then I also own a restaurant. So we're, we're sitting here now. My dad arrived in 1973 and the next day Liverpool won, uh, won the league, league title. For my dad, the first image of Liverpool was this crazy, vibrant city. Everyone's winning, um, you know, it's, it's just a great place to be. And so um, I was really lucky to experience uh, a parade like that this year. Actually, all the uh, Chinese cultural things he's learned, he's actually learned them in Liverpool. So everything from calligraphy, uh, martial arts. I think in Liverpool, it's like, it's like a cultural hub and you get the opportunity to do this. Liverpool's my home, um, it'll always be my home. I don't feel like I've lost any of the Chinese aspect of it because I'm still surrounded by, by it all. Not necessarily an object, but I would say Bruce Lee. If I hadn't watched his films when I was younger, I don't think I would feel um, as closely connected to Hong Kong and being Chinese if I hadn't watched his films. My name, Yin Yan Liu. Some of the English people call me Hong Kong Philip. <laughs> That's my name. And uh, I have been here since 1960. Of course, I'm retired because I'm over 80 years old. <laughs> you can't expect me still working. <laughs> I only spend my, uh, my time for the Overseas Chinese Associations overseas Chinese, anything I can help because I don't have much time. Uh, maybe another few years I, I'll be passed away. <laughs> Qigong Tong. Um, we got outside is uh, in English called Chinese Freemason. The, the member has gone less and also they come to Liverpool and go to everywhere. So uh, not, not the same as at the beginning, or jump into Liverpool and stay in Liverpool for the waiting for the job, you see. And now uh, it's uh, round about 200, 200 members. Once a few thousand. Yeah, yeah. The earliest, 1942. This is the, the time they, they join in. These are the names, this is where they're from, the age of the person, and when they join in. Uh, okay. uh, my mother, uh, in 1973, I brought my mother over from Hong Kong to Liverpool, and she stayed with me all the time. My mother, she had been poor from, from the beginning, when she was young. And married to my, my dad, also very poor, right? I got her over and she stayed with me. She was so happy with me and with my kids. Um, uh, at least I got 17 years with her and 
you live good whilst living happy with the whole family for 17 years. Uh, what I aim for, my kids at least go to university. When they can finish university and they got their own brain, they know what to do. So my duty is done. If anyone asks me, where's your home? Liverpool, not Hong Kong. Oh. I was born in Hainan, uh, a tropical island in China. What they call it, it's like Chinese Hawaii. And the sea view, it's, all, it's like River Mercy. But uh, I remember when I was little, I always uh, able to cycling and have a little jog with my granddad. So this part, it really reminds me of the view, very peaceful, very calm. I've been living in Liverpool since 2002. It's been a long time, um, since I graduated from uni anyway. I found a job, settled, and then uh, working for Liverpool City Council. That's my full-time job as a guidance officer. It's blending with two cultures together, with the old and the new things. Um, but we're in a very good position because uh, with the Liverpool City Council, give up loads of opportunity to the Chinese people and a lot of support. I have a daughter. She's in primary school. <laughs> at home, I try to speak Mandarin with her. Um, my husband speaks Cantonese, so I tried her to get to know a bit of Chinese culture. This cop pictures remind me of home because my dad's a businessman and he enjoys loads of different collections of the Chinese tradition, like including the Chinese um, calligraphy pictures and this one actually um it reminds me a lot because of this like chinese traditional uh arch building and the tree my name is tony kwok and i was born in liverpool in 1931 and uh, one of my parents needless to say was chinese and on my mother's side she's irish i think i possibly was the first part Chinese boy ever going to Merchant Taylor School and I didn't realize till later it seemed I was the only Catholic. <laughs> now in Liverpool the Chinatown of the day was um, Pitt Street which went down to the square which is referred to as Cleveland Square. Pitt Street then went up to where St. Michael's Church was where many of the Chinese went to church there. And well, how my father came to England could be repeated many, many times over with starting with nothing and ending up educating the children in a decent school and giving them a better life as they grew older. Since the beginning of my life in Pitt Street, I learned many things about the close community, how they live together, and if there's any problems, we do all group together and solve the problems out. When I was in Chinatown, I realized if you're going to be self-employed, which is my intention, my father's always been self-employed, no matter how humble it was, he was self-employed. He showed me once at, um, a hawker's license, which is the princely sum of 50p, 10 shillings. Mm. And with that, he, he held this like some valuable piece of paper. I can go and buy and sell. My name's Bernard Gam and I'm part owner of Signature Fit Club, which has been going for three or four years. When I was a child, I probably rebelled against being Chinese because I wasn't, uh, all my friends were English. So when my parents wanted me to take up Chinese language, Chinese um, speaking courses, I, I didn't want that. I was more, just more westernised. And then obviously the older I got, I wanted to go back to my heritage. So I wanted to go back to more the Chinese side. The Chinese community, the younger generation, the second, third generation uh, has lost. Uh, I think the very stereotypic Chinese industry would be catering, but now I think a lot it's different. Being Chinese in Liverpool, I felt it's a bit my individual, I had that individuality really rather than being the norm. My name is Perry, second generation in Liverpool. This is me, was my father's business, passed away eight years ago and now I've took over make and value other products in Liverpool. Every weekend we'd be in Chinatown with my dad. Chinatown was the centre of Liverpool back then. My dad come over from Singapore when he was 16, 17. He wanted to be a teddy boy, so he'd come over, the Beatles, 
teddy boy, he used to dress like a teddy boy, black suit, little skinny tie. Not musicians or nothing, they just loved the music, they just loved the city, fell in love with it. His first car was a little mini. With the older generation now, you know, they put the kids through private education and everything else. They don't want them to be in takeaways, they don't want them to be in restaurants, they want them to be, have more professional jobs. And so the first generation and second generation are dying off. I, listen, we all want to better our kids, right? That's what we're doing, what we're doing to better our kids, so... My name's Steven, and I do interior design in Liverpool, and I come from Hong Kong. My family is quite different to other families doing immigration, because uh, my first time came to Liverpool, which is the 2010, when the first time it was. Um, mission trip from the church in Hong Kong. To me, to make me remember to my own place, my home, is not the place, it's when the time when I do the design of my new home here in Liverpool, when I start up to draw the layout plan, and that layout plan makes me feel and remember the home place of Hong Kong. I'm an accountant, yeah, but after I came to Liverpool, I started up my own business. Although um, the stuff selling in the supermarket is very different uh, from Hong Kong, but uh, it reminds me, um, as a housewife, we cook for our family. Yeah, That um, makes me think of my family in Hong Kong. The church reminds me of um, Hong Kong because the people are friendly, yeah, mostly. <laughs> In the future, I think I will stay here, yeah, also helping the church as well. Yeah, maybe doing some engineering stuff. I like creative things, yeah, so you can do lots of stuff on computers. Well, I came as a young boy in 1962, um, when I was about 13. I came over to study and I stayed with my uncle. My father was in America. I, I think the, the Pear Head was one of the uh, icon places that, that in Liverpool. Um, I remember when in, in the 60s, and uh, the, the, there's a song by Jerry Madison, So very close to mercy to this land. This is a wonderful song that I always remember. Because I crossed a ferry once, and I promised myself I'm going to take my grandchildren when they cross the ferry. Uh, I did, when Joe was about three years old. Uh, now he's nine years old. Chinatown, the uh, restaurant sign is really kind of, um, um, remind me about Hong Kong, where I lived uh, from 1953 to 1963. Because Hong Kong was a, a very kind of small, Port City then. So I always say, uh, we are travel, we have a dream. And then we go through a little river in China, a little pond, a little lake, and then we go to the ocean. And then we, we end up where we are now. So there's a long journey. You have gain, you have loss, you've got friendship, you have lost friendships, you lose business, but you gain business. Life is like this. Thank you.